Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to another Affiliate Summit webinar. My name is Jim Kukrell. I am the Affiliate Summit Ambassador, and that means I am here to help you figure out how to be successful in your career, in your brand, in your business. And that means we're going to bring you another great Affiliate Summit webinar. This is part of a series of webinars that we're doing leading up to the Affiliate Summit show in August in New York City, which is Affiliate Summit East 2011. And uh, we're going to just go through a few announcements real quick, and then we're going to bring out our main presenter, Jay Berkowitz, and he's going to take it away. Um, we will be doing Q&A at the end, so stick around. After Jay's done, you'll be able to ask him any question you want to ask, and we'll get him to answer those for you. A few quick announcements. I love feedfront.com. We're doing this really amazing contest right now, and you can have your photo. If you take a picture of yourself, or your staff, holding a copy of Feedfront Magazine, and you go to ilovefeedfront.com. All you have to do is upload the photo and be part of this contest. The winner gets their picture on the cover of the August issue of Feedfront Magazine, sent to over 40,000 people, including all the people at the show. So go get a photo of yourself in the shower like this guy did, or whatever, and, and upload the photo and get people to vote for it, and you could be on the cover. ilovefeedfront.com. The other thing that we're doing at Affiliate Summit are these things called meetups, and they're really successful. We're on our fourth month uh, now, and they're growing. They're all over the world. We have them in Berlin and Vancouver and, and New York City and Boston and Detroit and Chicago and San Francisco. I mean, in Orlando. They're everywhere, <clears throat> everywhere right now. If you want to organize a meetup in your city, we'd be more than happy to have you do that. Just go to AffiliateSummit.com slash meetups. And you get instructions on how to do that there. And you can find links to the meetup that may be in the city you're in right now. And you can be part of that. There's some special ad rates going on for Feedfront and Affiliate Summit. We want you to be an advertising partner. If you would like some massive exposure for your business or brand to people that matter, thought shapers, influencers, affiliates, merchants, people that really matter in your industry, go to feedfront.com slash advertising. We've got some really amazing ad packages in there that are uh, will just blow you away in terms of what you get. We're talking about passes to the show, uh, uh, email sponsorships to everyone on the email list, uh, backlinks to from the site to your website, 30-minute uh, promotional audio interviews, full-page magazine ads. It's all in this one big package. So contact me at jim at affiliatesummit.com, and I'd be happy to walk you through that and tell you more about it. We do have a 10% discount today, and if you want to join us in New York City for Affiliate Summit East 2011, just go to AffiliateSummit.com, put in the coupon code ASC11WEB1, ASC11WEB1, go ahead and write that down, ASC11WEB1, and you can get a 10% discount to come to the show. Just click on the big register button, sign up, come on to the show, and it would be my pleasure to meet you and... Uh, see Jay and Sean and Missy and see all the all the regulars at Affiliate Summit in New York. It's going to be an amazing show as usual. There are some super amazing keynotes this time. I think there's four or five keynotes, four at least. And you're going to be blown away by the, the quality of content here. So let's get into this because I know that's why you came here is to find out more about uh, what Jay's presenting today. And if you want to tweet today, and we'd love to have you tweet, you can just use the hashtag, which is AFSUMWebinar. Just keeps track of all the people having discussions about the webinar today. Affiliate Summit is the Twitter account as well. And our presenter is Jay Berkowitz. And that's how it's spelled. So, again, the hashtag is AFSUMWebinar. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to switch over and give Jay Berkowitz control of the, uh, of the presentation and let him take it away. And then we will... Uh, we will uh, go from there. So let me do this. Give keyboard and mouse. It looks like I have you under control. Jay, are you there? I'm here. Okay. Well, you know <laughs> and what? so is I Tyler. Think, has everyone seen everything? I think I maybe I forgot to show my screen the whole time. Didn't I? <laughs> All right. Well, I think I messed up the whole front part of this webinar. <laughs> but uh, I had slides I was supposed to be showing, but... Uh, Apparently, I forgot to hit that button. So 
you guys were all probably looking at the original screen. So what we're going to do is instead of redoing that all again, y'all heard me. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just give Jay control here. And Jay is going to take it away. Now, while Jay is taking control, I want to tell you a little bit uh, about um, Jay. Because I've known Jay for, oh gosh, uh, at least six or seven years now. And Jay is a truly amazing presenter and speaker, has been a mentor of mine, and somebody who I admire greatly. I've learned a lot from Jay, not only professionally, uh, but personally. He's a great guy, known him for a long time, and he always brings it. He always brings the correct information that's going to blow you away. So without further ado, I want to introduce my friend and my mentor, Jay Berkowitz, for 10 strategies for launching a web-based business. Jay, take it away. Thanks so much, Jim. Um, let's just get a check and make sure you guys can see a slide that says 10 strategies for launching a web-based business and the audio is good. All's good? I'm looking here and let's see in the chat. Oh, by the way, for people, yes, this is being recorded and William says that it looks good. Okay, great. And, you know, please type in any questions in the GoToWebinar interface and Jim and I will take questions uh, when we wrap up. We're going to try and run through this in about 40 minutes. And we're going to talk about creating that new web-based business and some different models for doing that. I'm going to cover some real basic stuff, and then we're going to cover off some more advanced strategies, um, some of the more uh, advanced kind of things that a guy like Jim Cooper will be doing. So um, our objectives today are to talk about selecting that business model, then developing your website. Of course, you need to generate traffic to the website. We're going to talk about things like search engine optimizing your website, for that free traffic and then you know of course we want to make some money so we're going to talk about strategies for monetizing the website um, if you guys want I didn't get a chance to get the slides up yet so if you just want to pop over to 10 golden rules uh, sign up for our e-newsletter and I'll uh, email you the slides after the presentation and um, a link to the slides and um, just go to 10goldenrules.com if you want to unsubscribe So uh, the first uh, area I want to start is, you know, what are you going to create a website about? And the best place to start is to start with something you really get passionate about. Because you can't... Hey, Jay, real quick. Something happened and we lost your sound on the audio. We can hardly hear you. All right. Test one, two. There. You say, go, go, go again. Test one, two. That's a little bit louder. Yeah. You faded real while you were talking. It just faded. Sorry. I wonder if the connection's not that good. The web connection. Now you're still a little bit faded. You weren't as uh, clear as you were in the when you were first talking. If you want, I can call in. There. That, that, now you sound fine. I think it's just because I'm on the Skype connection and. Oh, you. If we calling. lose it again. If we lose it again, I'll call in on the line because I haven't changed anything. Okay. So. The, the first area we're talking about passion and here obviously we have someone who's very very passionate about knitting and you know I wouldn't recommend that this person create a website about soccer I mean she's obviously living and breathing knitting and she could tell you all about knitting needles and knitting patterns and creating clothes that that she created herself by knitting and um, you know at some point she better start selling some of this stuff so the first place I, I recommend you start is start with something that you're really really passionate about obviously this gentleman is extremely passionate about the wines that he's probably bottled himself for his wine collection and you know think about the things that you're like totally into because if you're really gonna provide value if you're really gonna create a website you want to start with something that you have a lot of knowledge and you want to start with something that you have a real passionate interest you know, what are the blogs you subscribe to? What are the magazines you subscribe to? Because, you know, you can really, really create good content. And, you know, the one thing I highly recommend is don't be afraid of your level of expertise. You don't have to be the best wine um, bottler in the world to have a very, very successful web-based business. There's a saying that you just have to know more than 95% of everybody else in the world. And I bet you this guy knows a heck of a lot more about wine than almost everybody except for uh, the next uh, person we're going to feature. 
And if you, if you know more than 95% of the people in the world, you can become enough of an expert and it's something you're going to love to do. I mean, you're going to love to create content, whether it's blogs or social media or video about that content. Quick story here about my friend Gary Vaynerchuk. And I actually interviewed Gary, I guess, about three years ago in Las Vegas at Affiliate Summit for the 10 Golden Rules podcast. And he talked about when he started creating this little video uh, on winelibrary.tv out of his father's wine store. And it was a small wine business. And Gary started promoting it by creating a YouTube video every single day. And this guy's really, really passionate if you check it out. I mean, his passion uh, just exudes off the screen when he's talking about wines. And he recently created the 1,000th episode of Wine Library TV. And what he said he did is every single day he just created a video about the different wines that were coming into the store. If there was a sommelier, he'd get them on the show. He got celebrities on the show. And over time, it just built up. And he would spend 15 minutes just shooting this quick video in his office every single morning. And then he would spend the rest of the day passionately talking about wines and all the different social media and not promoting his videos. But, you know, over people would check out who is this guy who knows so much about wine. And over time, he built it up to the point where he has 80,000 views every single day of these, these wine videos. And the store went from $3 million in revenue to $60 million in revenue. So the first place, the first strategy I recommend is follow your passion. Pick something you're really, really passionate about. And it's also a really good approach to say, hey, I'm, I'm just going to start in, in my first sort of web business. I'm going to go for my passion. And, and you don't have to pick something that's the most profitable thing. But, you know, the first time you put up a website, the first time you create a blog, the first time you do a number of the projects we're going to be talking about here. And, you know, again, remember, this is, you know, targeting sort of a beginner message, but if you're more advanced, um, we're going to have lots of tips for you as we get through this. But, but you know, the first exercise when you do it yourself, follow your passion, and that's really going to drive you to the kind of success. So the first basics is we're going to figure out what we're going to talk about. And the second thing, we need a website. So it's really, really simple. I'm going to give you three very simple models to create a website. And the first one is just to create a blog website and this is my personal blog. It's not my company blog. And I just put fun stuff on here. And I'm just really building this up for maybe one day in the future. So I'm getting a little bit of credibility in Google and the other search engines by just having a website out there. So it, it's a basic WordPress blog. And it's pointing to jberkowitz.com. And that's the simplest, simplest way I recommend getting started. And, and it's so easy that you can become your own webmaster. And everyone thinks, oh, I need to spend five or $10,000. No, you know, WordPress is free. And you can just point it at your own domain name, your own website. I highly recommend that so that you own this, this address. You want to own a web abset address for the future. So we go to wordpress.org. We set up a very basic um, little um, blog. And blogging is just as easy as sending email. So I can create a new page, a, a virtual page, it's a blog post, but it, it, it can look exactly like a website. By going in, I create a title just so, like the title of an email, and then I create a link. So I just create um, a little link uh, in, you know, in the copy if I want. I can create that blue link. I go to Flickr.com. I, I often use Flickr or, or iStock Photo uh, to get photos. Make sure that you're using rights-free photos. Um, and, and I'm always crediting my photo source here uh, when it's on Flickr or I purchase a, a photo for like a dollar at iStock Photo. Very, very easy to add an image and press publish. And what happens is the, e the, the, the latest blog post push, pushes the older blog post down and you've just updated your virtual website uh, um, very, very simply. So a blog website is the first type of website. The second easy way to get going, I call it the editor model. Here's eHow that was created by Demand Media that recently had an initial publish offering and cre created a value for the company at $174 million. But their model is essentially an editor model where they have a number of different people who contribute con content for their blogs. The most popular one is called eHow. And the freelancers are paid you know, very, very little, somewhere between $10 and $20 to, 
to create those articles. So they use freelancers all around the world to create these articles. Another great uh, industry example is called Mashable. And these guys do a great, uh, a great job covering our industry, internet marketing and also Silicon Valley. Of course, the Huffington Post, another multi-million dollar success story where they just got people to create articles. They paid very little or they even paid nothing for the content. Where do you find these editors and, and article writers? There's a number of great sites. I love guru.com, G-U-R-U. Very, very easy to find experts. Elance, you can even find someone to create your website. Elance, short for freelance, elance.com. Mechanical Turk, um, now owned by Amazon, but you can get people to do things for, for you know, dollars. And um, I know Jim's a big fan of Fiverr, um, where for five bucks you can get people to create a website, optimize a website for you, and of course write lots and lots of really great articles, uh, content being so very important. And finally, I, I often will look to my local community college, another great place, finding journalism students and, and journalists, they're always looking for work. The third type of website, the, the third of three, the first one is a blog, the second one is uh, the simple editor model, and then the third one is where you actually create a community. Here's the new Affiliate Summit community, um, and here's a community we created called internetmarketingclub.org, that's a .org. Um, and it's to totally free to create, totally free to join. Um, and we created it on a Ning a platform called Ning, N-I-N-G dot com. And we have 1,400 members now on this like free website um, called internetmarketingclub.org. So the first strategy is follow your passion. The second strategy is to create your, your website. I mean, we're talking about creating websites here. And three simple models. Number one, create a blog. Number two, an editor model where you hire writers um, and you serve as the editor or you could even hire an editor to create that content. And the third option is to create community and we, we saw a great opportunity with a company called Ning, N-I-N-G, you can create that free community. Now if we're going to build a, you know, a traditional kind of website, I'd like to cover the very basics of website build. And again, really, really simple stuff and we start with a, a really um, let, what do we call this um, old-fashioned looking website and some friends of ours have a great charity called rescue rehab home and they save the lives of dogs and cats um, and they find a forever family it's a really great cause but the website needed some work so let's rebuild this website and go through sort of the basics of website build so the first thing is your logo should be in your top left hand position and everybody wants a really creative sort of different looking website but I would urge you to follow the conventions that people are looking for and we like the logo in the top left throughout the website the navigation should be on the left hand side or it should run across the top frankly I actually prefer it across the top because it uses less of the important real estate on the website so um, I would actually prefer it across the top but for this one the left hand side again you're looking for the web conventions that people expect the standards where they expect to see these things. Your site utilities. So if you have a login or if you have contact information, if you're a local business, your phone number, address, and, and login type of stuff should be in that top right-hand position. Again, that's become a web convention or a standard, and that's a place that people expect to see it. 20 to 30 percent of people who come to your website are searches, searchers. They are going to look for a search box. Even if they came to your website from Google or Bing or Yahoo, they're going to like to search. They don't like to click links. They don't like to read copy. So you should have that search box. And you can use um, a Google technology to put a search box on any website. Very, very easy. You want to repeat your navigation. So even if you have it at the top, you want to repeat it at the bottom and add a sitemap. The sitemap is a clue for Google and the other search engines. And that page is a map that sort of links to all the other pages on your website. Follow the four second rule. Tell people who you are and what the site offers within four seconds. So between the logo and the slogan, we're giving people a clue. And then we're also going to pay it off with a short descriptive um, sort of photo series here that says we're sa we save dogs lives. We have free spay and neutering and the, this dog is available for adoption. 
And those images would rotate over and over and over. I'm sure you've seen a number of those. Uh, very simple little uh, photo. It could be an animated GIF, a GIF. Very simple. You can find these free on the web or you could get someone to build you a nice little animated GIF or Flash. Um, find them on Elance or, or one of those services. And we're going to talk a little bit more about search engine optimization, but here we're going to add copy for the search engines. And we want to have between 250 to 1,000 words on every single page. You have to have lots of words if you want Google to find your website in the search engine. We're going to add a UVP, a unique value proposition, something free that we're going to offer people to get their names. And we're going to get their names, and then we're going to honor that relationship by sending them an interesting and valuable e-newsletter over time. And we might offer another type of feature such as, um, you know, we came up with an iPhone app for these guys. And so that would be in the bottom right-hand portion. So strategy number three, the basics of your website build. We're going to put the logo in the top left position. And anywhere throughout the website, if people click on that logo, it's going to take them back to the home page. Again, that's a convention or standard that everybody's used to now. The four second rule, who you are and what your site offers is paid off by the slogan and the little image here. The navigation is going to be on the left or the top. We're going to add a lot of copy for the search engines. The utilities top right, 20 to 30 percent of people like to search. We're going to add a search box. Again, that should be in the top right hand portion of the website. We're going to add a UVP, a unique value proposition such as free guide to save dogs. And we're going to repeat the navigation across the bottom. The next section is some different content strategies. We touched on them a little bit earlier with regards to editors. But let's say you're doing this on your own and you just want to, you know, come up with basic content. Marcus Sheridan's an amazing guy. And I heard him on a really great uh, podcast called HubSpot TV. It's actually a video podcast. And this guy says what, what he does is building fiberglass pools and educating the world about pools at riverpoolsandspas.com. So I didn't want to get a fancy expert like Jay Berkowitz or Jim Kukrell to tell us how to do this. Let's get a, you know, a guy who's basically, you know, he installs pools. And this guy's been really, really successful. What he says about his very popular blog website, this is another example of a simple blog website, is that his customers are looking for answers. And he puts himself in his customer's seat. What are they looking for? So he says, how do I start a blog? It's easy. Write the top 20 questions you get as a business owner. How much does a fiberglass pool cost? What's the difference between a fiberglass and a concrete pool? Now you have 20 titles, 20 blog articles. And if you just do this two times a week over 10 weeks, you've got an amazing blog up and running, and you're answering the kind of questions that people are going to be asking by searching in Google and the other search engines. And I mentioned this a little earlier. He calls it the disease of knowledge. I called it the curse of knowledge. Everybody thinks that they, you know, that they, you know, don't, that everybody's not looking for their expertise. But he says, make it really simple. You know, they don't want to know how smart you are. They just want your basic knowledge. And he writes it at the level of a kindergartner. And we see his websites had as many as 18,000 visitors according to this free tool called Compete.com. Now let's say you take those 20 articles or 20 blog posts and you put them on your website. The next thing is people always say, well, I don't have time to do, you know, the articles and the Facebook and the Twitter and the podcasts and the YouTube. Well, here's a really, really simple strategy and I call it cascading content. So let's say that you know, anybody who, who wants to do this website thing, you have to be able to find enough time to write those two articles every week. Or at the very least, you have to have 15 or 20 minutes to sit down with a writer. Let's go back to Elance and Guru and the, and the journalism student. You sit down with him or her for 15 minutes and you brief them and then they write the two articles for you. Well, isn't that easy? All you need is 15 or 20 minutes to have a really, really good content strategy. So you're going to write those two articles, and then the next thing is what I call cascade the content out throughout the social media. So you could take that same article and record it as a podcast and put that on iTunes or a video and put it on YouTube. You can syndicate those articles out through articles like e articles, and then other people can publish your article, and they must link back to your website if they take your article. 
we're going to take that article and turn it into a couple little blog posts if you have a blog separate from your website but if your website is a blog you can just you know put it on your on your website and then we're going to do a couple Facebook updates some Twitter updates and some LinkedIn updates so essentially all you had to do is write those two or three articles a week and then put a little you know one-liner um, link to them from Facebook Twitter and LinkedIn and then, then publish that that article over at easy and articles and some under other syndicated sites so now your content strategy is very very wide and you're spreading your content out through, throughout a number of different social media so that fourth strategy is to create great content for your website answer the 20 questions that you get asked the most and then after that you could answer the 20 questions that you know people should be asking you and then you want to cascade that content out throughout your various social media and create some different content now for the fifth strategy we're gonna to have to drive some traffic we want to get some people over to your website so we created you know basically a virtual funnel here and we often use that term in, in marketing internet marketing that we're gonna funnel a lot of different traffic into your website and then you know as it as it gets into the funnel it's gonna get squeezed down um, to a, a few people who actually take an action on your website um, so the first category we're gonna look at is search engine marketing now the, the the area on the top and the right hand side of a Google search like buy an internet domain name would be the pay-per-click or paid search area uh, of Google now paid search is really really easy to do but what I encourage people the mistake everybody makes is they do paid search focusing on clicks not focusing on conversions so you see here that we had 2,000 impressions our ad ran 2,000 times we had 28 clicks, which is a 1.3% uh, um, click-through rate. But what's really, really important is the conversion rate. 25% of the people who clicked on our ads came, you know, filled out a form on our website. They signed up for a webinar. They downloaded a chapter of my book. They, they downloaded a copy of my presentation. So how do you do conversion tracking? Here's one of our clients' websites, World's Cutest. And all we had to do was after people entered the contest, we add a little bit of code that Google at Google pay -per click or Yahoo or Bing that they give you. And you just put a little code. And when people come to the confirmation page, the thank you page, right? This is the page after they enter the contest, we put a little code on the thank you page. So we know how many people clicked on the ads, but importantly, how many people did what we want them to do on our website? They either purchased a product they, they signed up for you know a webinar they downloaded a free ebook or they in this case actually entered a contest so that's the important part about the pay-per-click the uh, paid search engine marketing now how do you get in the free area the SEO the organic listings now 72 percent of people say that they prefer to click on these free listings the one below the paid and to the left hand side of the paid listings well, here's a really simplified, you know, we could do a whole presentation or a whole conference on SEO, but the simple version is what I call the ABCs of SEO. So first, the architecture. You want to have very clean code on a website, meaning you want to have, uh, you know, it's very simple and easy for the search engines to read. You want to have a lot of internal links. So here is a duiattorney.com, and they've got links to DUI attorney on the internal page they want to rank for DUI attorney they've got a lot of things working for them they've got the domain name and they've got the internal links to a page called DUI attorney and finally that site map helps them navigate the website as we talked about earlier now here's our ambassador and host today mr. Jimmy Kukrell and here's Jim's amazing website what's amazing about it well he's got 36,334 links to his website now, I'm sure you've heard about this in internet marketing they're called backlinks and these are other sites that link to your website other sites that are basically voting for your website in the eyes of Google and the other search engines because the 36,000 people who link to one of Jim's web pages are saying there's something good over there 
you know, Jim wrote a new book or Jim recorded a new video or Jim has a free ebook on his website. And that's the, that's the, you know, sort of the, 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 um, the value out there that Google measures. And they say, how many other people are referring me over to Jim's website? Another great strategy for getting these links is coming up with lists. So we put a number of lists on our website. It's, it's called link bait. You know, it's almost like a little trick because we said Affiliate Summit is the number one mar internet marketing trade show on our website. And hopefully someone at Affiliate Summit would, would say, oh, check this out. Um, we're on the top, we're, we're number one on the top 10 list of internet marketing shows. And we did the same thing with blogs and books and everything. So it's, it's like bait on a fish hook. It's like um, a list is a great way to get other people to link to your website. Now then the final C, so the A is the architecture, the B is the backlink, the, the C of ABCs is content. And so the first step in content is doing a little bit of keyword research. And we use just the Google advertising tool to find out how popular keywords are. We also use word tracker or keyword discovery. And we create a little chart like this and we look for keyword phrases that are highly searched but not too competitive. So for example, the phrase internet advertising trends is searched 27 times a day, but there's only 4,000 other websites with that phrase. Leadership keynote speakers, 13 searches, 299 competing. Search engine marketing services expert, 12 searches a day and nine competing websites. And what we do is we take those phrases and we write those phrases into a page of copy, repeating those phrases, targeted phrases, three times throughout the page. We want them near the top of the page, on the middle of the page, and at the bottom of the page. And this page on our website could be an article, a press release, or it could just be a product description type of page on our website. The final piece of the puzzle are the meta tags, and your title tag, your description tag, your H1, the headline tag, are very important, even the alt tag. So if you click view page source on your website, you can see the code on our website. And on that page, we said Jay Berkowitz selected his keynote speaker at first affiliate marketing conference in, in Sydney. And we've got targeted phrases like leadership keynote speaker in the copy and in the code, the H1 tag, the title tag, and the alt tag on the website. Another quick tool that's very, very valuable for measuring your SEO performance is a tool called SEM Rush. And if you just put in your website, you can find out how many phrases do you already have listed in the first two pages of Google uh, from an SEO perspective. So that's a really, really good tool to sort of set a baseline and see how your website's performing. It's also a great tool to go and look at what your competitors have listed, and that gives you another really good keyword strategy. So the fifth strategy is about driving traffic with search, pay search, the pay click, and make sure you're tracking conversions, not just clicks, and search engine optimization, or SEO. The ABCs of SEO, number one, nice clean architecture with a site map. Number two, backlinks, building links to your site. And number three, content, really good keyword phrases. Now the next area of driving traffic is affiliate marketing. You can send traffic to your website with a virtual sales force. And the beauty of affiliate marketing, I'm sure everybody here knows all about affiliate marketing, so I don't need to go into detail, but the beauty of affiliate marketing is it's generally CPA or cost per acquisition. So we only pay when somebody gets a sale on our website. When someone sends a link, a click over to our website and someone makes a purchase, or we get a lead or, or an action on the website. So it's CPA cost per action or cost per acquisition on the website. Now here's a clue for affiliate marketing. Uh, Sean Collins, the founder of Affiliate Marketing has a of Affiliate Summit, has a great, great website. Highly recommend it, affiliatetip.com. And we see here that Sean has a link to the, the book that Affiliate Summit put out. And it, if you hover your little mouse over this book, you'll see the code at the bottom. And you see a clue here that he's actually signed up as an affiliate with Amazon and he's generating a little bit of uh, additional revenue. Now, if other people sign up as an affiliate for your products and services, they're going to drive traffic to your website. 
here's a couple great affiliate marketing uh, solutions, great places to start either signing up for affiliate traffic or you can sign up to make some money as an affiliate. Of course, share a sale, CJ Commission Junction, Link Share, and, and the Google Affiliate Network. Another great way to drive traffic is through banner advertising and email advertising. And you can actually use the Google AdWords um, network and you can select the banner advertising network and other people will run banners on their websites that you can buy those banner locations to promote traffic to your website. So the sixth strategy of driving traffic is affiliate marketing and the beauty of it is CPA, cost per acquisition. And you can even do banner and email advertising in a CPA or cost per acquisition basis. The next and final sort of area of the funnel we're going to look at here is social media. And we're going to use all these different tools to drive traffic into our website and, and that virtual funnel, if you will. The first area is Facebook. And Facebook is absolutely becoming a monster force in our industry. With 600 million active users, that's they log in at least once a month, amazing opportunities on Facebook. So the first place uh, to start is you want to have a fan page or like a virtual uh, profile for your business. Now this is different than your personal profile. So Guy Kawasaki would have a personal page, but here he's created a fan page or a business page for his new book called Enchantment. You want to make sure that you protect your Facebook domain names, if you will. If, if you can imagine, I'm doing the quotes in the air. But you can actually own Facebook.com slash your website name. Um, here we, we captured the Facebook domain for our client Dolphin Encounters. The next really, really neat opportunity is Facebook advertising. And you see these ads on the right-hand side of my, my Facebook experience are all ads about internet marketing. You know, something about Google, need a witty writer, someone's advertising to me because they know I might be hiring freelance writers. And this is talking about social media marketing. So the ads are very relevant to the viewer. Now, a year ago in New York City, I did a little promotion for the Affiliate Summit Conference. And I set up a simple ad about my presentation at Affiliate Summit. Now here's the magic of this type of advertising. We went from 500 or 600 million people on, on Facebook and I selected people by their ages, by where they lived, and people who were fans of affiliate websites and I went from 500 million people down to 5,000 people that I was targeting. The ads are very testable. Like this ad got twice as many clicks on average as this ad. And we get the results are very, very precise like the Google pay-per-click advertising. The next important social media is YouTube. And a lot of people don't realize this video website is now the number three website in the world for traffic. And it's the number two search engine. It's the number two place that people are searching for your products and services and answers to their questions. This company called Blendtex done an amazing job. Here we see they're blending um, an iPad. And, and basically what this is, is it's a very powerful product demonstration. But 11 million people have viewed this crazy video of this guy blending an iPad into a fine metallic dust. The sales of this company didn't double or triple. The sales of Blendtec are up five times after 100 million people viewed their videos. My friend Tim Carter has a great website called Ask the Builder. And he has tons and tons of videos that have been search engine optimized. So here's an example of if somebody wanted to figure out how to install a three-way switch. Jim, I don't know if you could do that. I couldn't do that. Um, and I might search for it on Google or on YouTube. Now, if you can get your video to, to optimize on YouTube, it will also pop up in Google. And what an amazing way to drive traffic to your website. 462,000 people have watched Tim's video about how to install a three-way switch. Another powerful social media is Twitter. Dell Outlet has used Twitter to sell millions of dollars of refurbished computer goods. So basically, if you send back your Dell monitor or your Dell computer, Dell doesn't sell it again as new. They sell it through Dell Outlet. Uh, very, very successful. 
my friend J.B. Glossinger created the number one motivational personal podcast on iTunes, and he's developed a six-figure business from an, an iTunes podcast. So strategy number seven is using social media to drive more traffic into that funnel. We saw the power of Facebook fan pages and Facebook advertising, amazing YouTube videos, and optimizing those videos to, so they come up in search on the number two search engine in the world. And of course, using Twitter and things like podcasts. The next most important thing is when you get them to your website, now we want to create a relationship. So here's a free sign up on uh, Moniker's website. A, a UVP is something, that, a term I coined in my 10 golden rules. It's a unique value proposition. And with eDiets, we created the free diet profile. What is a pre free diet profile? Well, that changed all the time, but essentially what we were offering people was information about how long it was going to take them to achieve their weight loss goals. And so it was just a simple questionnaire that changed over time. On Jim Cramer's site, we offered the, the product totally free for 30 days. But essentially what that UVP is, is it's something free like a, a download or, you know, in this case, a free internet profit guide. It's just a free download that's asking people for three simple pieces of information. Their first name, their last name, and their email. And we're getting permission to send them this valuable information and then send them an e-newsletter on an ongoing basis. My friend Owen Frager comes into my mailbox every night around midnight, or here it came in at 1.54 a.m. But it's a great tool because he stays top of mind with me in his area of expertise. And there's a certain magic to staying in touch with people. I call it the magic of eight. On average, it takes eight contacts with someone to do business with them on the internet. Don't make the mistake of assuming that the first time people come to your website, they're ready to plunk down their all-important dollars. The first time people go in search of something, it's just that research phase. So you gotta connect with them many, many times over a period of time. My friend Chef Patrick does a great job with his RSS feed. And what an RSS feed is really simple syndication. Allow people to subscribe to your blogs and your websites to get updates in a modern manner. Not everybody wants an e-newsletter through email. So I've set up a Google Reader on my iPhone and I take all of my blog feeds on my phone. Some people use an iGoogle. This is how I used to do it on my computer. I've customized my Google page so when, when I go to Google, it shows me the blogs that I've subscribed through an RSS reader. And the, 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 the sort of sexy new way of, of building these relationships is with the like button. Uh, Susan is a friend of mine and she uh, showed me this like button she found on the Levi's website. And when she clicked the like button, everybody who is looking at her Facebook, um, her regular Facebook wall of information, everybody in her network is going to see that Susan likes the boyfriend skinny to die for jeans and if they click on that they're gonna head over to Levi's so strategy number eight is creating those virtual relationships create a UVP a unique value proposition something free on your website like an ebook or a download offer those e-newsletters and build up those likes and RSS subscriptions building that relationship for the magic of eight, so you have an opportunity to contact people eight times. Now the ninth area we're gonna look at is how do we make some money on the website? I mean, Groupon's done phenomenally well with this concept of the deal of the day, and they give customized local deals. This company was the fastest company ever to have a $1 billion valuation. In just seven months, they were worth a billion dollars. A Couple of years ago, I was doing a presentation um, in Las Vegas, and I used this example of Steve Pavlina's website. And Steve's using Google AdSense ads. So you see here the ads by Google, and these ads are a great way to monetize your website because you're gonna split the revenue with Google, or you can use a number of other tools to do this. You're gonna split the revenue with Google for the pay-per-click ads on your website. Now, it's funny because I was showing Steve's ad and, and, I, and he puts up his hand, he was in the audience. Uh, but he's making a lot of money with Google AdSense. You, of course, can put affiliate banners on your website. Here's an eDiets ad on our diabetes clients' websites. And a new tool from Isaiah allows you to do paper post. 
you can actually get paid for your posts and they have another product called sponsored tweets. The final thought in this section I'm going to share with you, I've been watching um, a recent product launch and I'm going to give you some more details on what those are in one second. But Brendan Burchard's pointed out, you know, very simply a couple things. The first one is that if you, if you want to make money, you have to have something to sell on your website. I know that sounds really obvious, but you know a lot of supposed gurus, you know, don't have anything to sell on their website. And he said that there's really just six types of products that you know gurus and experts can make money from. You can have books and eBooks. You can do paid presentations. You can have DVDs, audio series, courses, and coaching. And so it's really really simple. You know, you have to have one of these six things on your website if you want to be able to make some money on your website. So the ninth strategy is all about monetizing the traffic to your website. And you do that through affiliate marketing, AdSense, paper post, and having a product to sell on your website. For the final section I want to tell you the story of a friend of mine who was basically a, a stay-at-home dad and he used to dabble in the stock market and you know his friends would always say hey you know do me a favor and tell me about some great stocks because I'm at the office and you know, you're home watching the stock market all day. And, um, you know, he basically came up with this concept of creating a newsletter that, that would be a product that, you know, people would be able to subscribe to his product. And so, you know, he was a stay-at-home dad and his wife wanted him to go out to work, but, you know, he'd been a stay-at-home dad for six years and he wasn't really a corporate kind of guy to start with. And so he said, you know what, I'm going to try this product marketing. And he came up with this concept of doing product launches. So the first time he sent out his newsletter, he made $1,300. And the next time he, he productized something, he made $6,000, then $8,000, and $34,000. And then he became fa famous, uh, my friend Jeff Walker, for six and seven. He, he raised $106,000 in sales in just under seven days through what are called product launches. Today, Jeff teaches us how to do product launches, and it's a product. You know, it's kind of ironic, right? He's selling a product called the Product Launch Formula, teaching people how to sell information. And, you know, to make it really, really easy for any of us to understand, you know, here's my friend, Will Hamilton, and he studies Jeff Walker's Product Launch Formula. And Will offers a bunch of free information by offering free videos on YouTube and at the end of every video, he says, come to our website and get some free video training courses. And he's built up a huge list of people who are interested in tennis. That's his area of expertise. And then he, he sells products. And he offers those products by way of three videos with free tennis training. And then he makes the course available for sale. And he uses Jeff's uh, strategy of a short time period that the course is available. And you have to sign up because it's starting on Monday and it's only available for three or four days. And Will generates over $100,000 on each of these product launches. So he's no longer a teaching pro. He's now an internet pro information product expert. Um, and you can do this in every single category. So, you know, back to our first area of passion, whether it's, if it's knitting or yoga or running or, or wine bottling, you could create information product marketing and you know, many, many, many people in different categories generate this six and seven type of revenue, six figures, $100,000 in just seven days. So let's summarize the 10 strategies for launching a new website. The first thing is you need a website. So we talked about the basics of website and the three types of websites. The first one was the editor model, the blog model, and the community model. The basics of website build we want you to follow your passion, create your website in your area of passion. Then we're going to drive some traffic to the website. Um, we're going to use search engine marketing and we're going to use uh, affiliate marketing and different types of traffic driving. Um, we need lots of content on the website and we're going to cascade that content out. So if we create an article every week, we're going to then take that article and put it on, on our Facebook, our LinkedIn, and we might even record that article as a YouTube video. And then we're going to monetize the website. And if we're really sophisticated, uh, after we've done all those basics, we might create an information product where we have a couple videos and then we either sell um, an online course, uh, ebooks, 
DVDs, videos, or live presentations. So with that, Jim, um, I'll turn it back to you, and I'd love to take some questions about this. Yeah, that's really fantastic stuff, Jay. Thanks so much. Um, I know that Jay moved kind of fast through that, but that's my fault because we just didn't have uh, all day. You know, people have to get back to work. So the good news is that, Jay, uh, we've recorded this entire thing. So if you want to go back and watch this back on video form later and take notes and fill in where you couldn't get in and hit pause, you'll be able to do that. But um, we are ready for questions. So if there are people on the call who would love to ask a question for Jay right now, go ahead and, and drop it into the, the box there, um, and we'll be happy to get those questions answered for you. Um, and Jim, if anyone yes. wants the slides, I'll, I'll, I'll put them up on SlideShare. So just pop me a note at 10 and uh, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll definitely send you a link to the slides when they're out. Okay, great. Um, there was a question that I already answered, but it was, if I create a blog with WordPress, can I change the name from name.wordpress.com to the regular domain name later? And I think, and, and the answer to that question is yes, uh, I'm right about that, right, Jay? Yeah, and that, that was what I was recommending, and I you know, apologize, it's kind of quick, but my domain, jberkowitz.com, is probably something like you know, blog.wordpress.jberkowitz.com, you know, but you can take a WordPress blog and point it to your domain name. So it's absolutely the simplest and most cost-effective way of getting your own domain name, and you definitely want to have your blog at your own domain name because over time, a lot of people are going to link to your blog. You know, every time you write a good article, you know, bloggers all link to each other. So you're going to build prominence in the eyes of Google and the other search engines. The more people who link to your, your articles and the more articles you write, the more blog posts you write, Google gives you credit for updating that content. So you want to build that credibility. You want to build all those links to your own domain name so that you have value in that domain over time. And, you know, in the future, you might put up a regular website or you could you know, switch from one blogging company to another. But you definitely want to build that asset at that original domain that you own. Yeah, the, the, there's always a big confusion with, uh, with my students is the difference between WordPress.com and WordPress.org. And I think the best way to describe it is WordPress.com is where uh, you, they build the site for you and you use their templates. It still runs on WordPress, but it's not installed on your own hosting account. Um, WordPress.org is where you use the WordPress software, but you actually have to have a web host and you can upload and customize your website. The reason I don't like WordPress.com is because you can't add things like Jay think that Jay talked about, like affiliate ads. You can't add Google Analytics code. You can't add any type of code or uh, Google AdSense into that WordPress.com. So it severely strictly limits how much you can customize your website, right, Jay? Yeah, exactly. And, you know, WordPress.org is the one we showed in the presentation. Right. It's definitely the way to go. Uh, okay, we've got uh, another one. Uh, oh, we have somebody from uh, the USF in here says, I still remember most of this. Uh, question, I finally set up a WordPress blog, have the Twitter name, getting Facebook, but YouTube is taken, will want to do videos in the future. Should I reach out and try to get it from the current user? If not, what do you recommend? So they have Twitter, they're getting Facebook, but the YouTube channel name is taken. What do you suggest that they do? You know, you can definitely get it. Hopefully you'll get it over time if it's not active. Or you could just get a version with a dash because that'll still be friendly to the keywords. Like, um, you know, if you've got 10 dash golden dash rules, um, you know, that would, would be valuable from a search engine perspective over time. Um, and then, you know, just keep an eye on it. And hopefully that the person who has it uh, doesn't use it. And uh, maybe they'll be kind enough to give it to you in the future. Yeah, the thing about YouTube channel names, which is also your username. So, for example, I'm YouTube.com slash Jim Kukrell. And, Jay, you're probably slash 10 golden rules, right? Yeah. So you can't change that ever. And I've tried to uh, ask YouTube to let me change it from my old one to my new one. I had to make a whole new one because they wouldn't let me change the old one. All right. Um, well, uh, I'm not seeing any other questions coming through. I'll give you another second here um, to add a question. If not, we'll, we'll wrap it up. 
I want to thank Jay for being here for this Affiliate Summit webinar. Um, this is information that you need to have. And I love the way that Jay presents it because, you know, I know we went through, he went through it a little quick, but that's my fault. But I love the way he presents it because it just outlines all of the things that you really need to know to be successful in this business. And I know it was just an overview, but there were really important things and they're really important tools and tips and strategies that he lists there. So um, take it to heart. If you're watching this webinar and, and you wanted to get into the internet business, you wanted to start to build a business online, you wanted to start to, incre to, to make your business successful or your blog that you already have, follow all of those things and give them a shot. Um, another one that just says, thanks, Jay. It was newbie friendly. And we'll see you all at uh, ASC 11. Um, so, um, all right, everybody. Well, Jay, thank you again. Hey, my pleasure, Jim. And thank you for the opportunity. And um, everybody, I look forward to, you know, just pop me a note on 10 Golden Rules and, uh, or, you know, Facebook or Twitter or whatever, whatever your favorite is. And I'd love to, uh, to sort of meet you all virtually. Yeah, and I got to tell you, it's our pleasure. Thanks so much. If you're watching this recording, uh, we hope to see you at the Affiliate Summit East 2011 this year or in the future at the Affiliate Summit West or any video, any Affiliate Summit event coming up in the future. Come see Jay uh, Berkowitz speak in person, as I have done many times. And uh, thank you very much, everybody, for being here. Have a great week. Have a great summer. And we will all see you soon. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.